Hello, everyone, and hello, Marco. How are you doing there, Marco? Good. How are you today, Jamie? Doing great. Thank you. And I hope you're all doing well. Marco and I are going to have a little conversation here. I'm going to present some stuff. And um, this is the stuff we're going to be talking about tomorrow uh, during our multi-hour meeting um, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So please join us and we'll go deeper into this. But for now, for starters, let me share uh, some images from Jacques Fresco and his kind of visionary concepts for these sort of circular cities. So these are various drawings. They're mostly circular, like this one over here on the, on the right is S-shaped, of course. And uh, anyway, lots of different concepts, but the characteristic one, ones, plural, have this kind of circular shape and they're kind of in different sections. Now, this is for human beings inhabiting a physical space. For ICIC, the intentional city in the clouds, um, it's more about conversations and uh, in a sense, projections of humans occupying a virtual space of ideas and conversations and co-creation. So, but the circular city, whether physical or in the clouds could take a similar circular form organized into sections and subsections and whatnot. So we'll get to that in a moment, but first I wanna talk about something that could coincide with this circular city in the clouds, intentional city in the clouds, I see, I see. And that is a new game that we could play. Um, and just like the game of Monopoly, which I often refer to that I say that humanity is trapped in essentially an all day monopoly game of individual hoarding for individual survival. And that's increasingly meant individual rent seeking for individual survival. And uh, which is what the game of monopoly is all about. What if we created the polar opposite of monopoly? So mono means singular, like one person or one entity controlling all. Um, the opposite, the polar opposite of that is from mono to omni. And it just so happens that if you swap the first two letters of the word monopoly, you get the word omnopoly. So, every, so all omni controlling everything as opposed to one person controlling everything. Um, and the advantages of, the, of an omnopoly are quite profound. I don't know that, that we can fully comprehend it yet within the, the confines of our current mindset and paradigm, but let's do the best that we can. And so I'm gonna screen share some images I've been kind of sketching up. So let me share those. Okay, so here we have um, a circular sort of, it's, it's, it's a circle, but it's also a spiral at the same time. And you see how it's divided up into sections that go out from the center. And so a, a one section uh, might look like, here, let me get my pencil connected here. Oh, that's funny, it's not connecting. So, okay, all right. Oh, that's funny. Okay. All right, so imagine now like this first section right here that I'm gonna outline in blue. You see how you could think of this portion as being section one, this other portion as being section two, and then this third portion being section three. You see that? One, two, three. And then for any slice, you can have a similar thing. Here's the first section, here's the second, and here's the third. Okay. 
And um, so what are these, what are these sections? Um, so imagine that I've got a list here that I typed up of these are nine different sections. Of course, you could divide this circle into any number of sections. But for each one, there would be three. The section itself, the slice of the pie, would be divvied up into three. And we'll look at what that means in a moment. But the sections that I've written up to span the entire whole are nine sections. Human needs, needs of community, needs of humanity as a whole, the needs of our species, followed by the needs of each of the other species in the planet, however many billions of species there are, whatever number, and then needs of ecosystems, planetary needs, and then beyond this world, spirituality and the cosmic. And then finally, it's kind of like, you know, how do we go about addressing all of these needs and all these important things? Goals and strategies would be a whole section. And then finally, solutions, planning, and implementation. So imagine that we started with human needs and we said, okay, if the goal here, if the game of Omnopoly is to address uh, all of these needs, all nine sections, so I'll just start with human needs here. And remember how each one is, each slice of the pie is organized into three sections. So if, if I were focused on human needs, I might say, all right, um, what human needs do we want to address first? So I might say, well, the most basic is food, water, and shelter, right? I mean, give people food, water, and shelter and they can survive. Deprive them of any one of those things and they're gonna have a hard time surviving. So let's start with the most basic, food, water, and shelter. And then from there, phase two, you could think of these as phases that evolve over time, one, two, three. So the second phase would be other basic needs of humans like healthcare, transportation, libraries, education, access to wild, to nature, et cetera. And, um, and then higher needs, you know, some of which could be like art and music and expression and whatnot, philosophy, whatever. Um, but many of these other basic needs and higher needs uh, end up being addressed in the realm of community. And so then we, from there, can think about the needs of community. Um, so let's check back in. The first three that I've got on the list are human needs, needs of community, and then needs of humanity as a whole. Now you see how that's a progression. We start with the individual, then the community, then humanity as a whole, right? And then for each one of those, we, you know, we, we can, each one of those is a, is a slice of a pie and can be broken up into three parts. So community needs, well, you've got the needs of local community, then regional communities like states or even countries, and then all the way up to planetary, the needs of humanity as a whole, as a planetary community, right? And that's kind of the higher the higher form. So we go from kind of the most basic, the most granular, up to the up to the highest level. Um, and then, you know, needs of humanity as a whole as a species. Um, so let me zip ahead here where I talk about consider the first three, the needs of people, first as individuals, and and look at the progression here. Right, so we start off as individuals, at the level of individual needs, and then we go through groupings like family, extended family, et cetera, and then finally up to community. And then from there, you know, local, neighborhood, da 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 da, da all the way up to humanity as a whole. So my point is that the first three really represent a progression from the granular to the macro. Um, and I'm saying, what if we consider the summation of people's needs, community needs and humanity as a whole, the sum of all three of those constitute 
all of humanity from the granular all the way to the to the full-blown humanity as a whole and i say what if we consider all of that as equaling humanity putting on her own oxygen mask right i mean just the complete addressing of all human needs something we've never experienced before not even close but that's really what i mean when i show the, these first three human needs needs of community needs of humanity as a whole and the sum of those three meeting all of the needs of all three of those slices and all three parts of each so three times three is nine addressing all nine of those sections um if that's humanity putting on her own oxygen mask and finally taking rich deep breaths and saying okay now you know our needs are met i would posit that that is the perfect condition for humanity to then turn to the passenger sitting to to her side and that would be mother earth and addressing mother earth's needs right mother earth's oxygen mask and that in turn could be broken down broken down into the next three species needs the needs of each of the other species ecosystem needs and planetary needs as a whole and then to that i would add the fourth beyond this world spirituality and the cosmic just to give it a category because um you know mother earth's needs don't stop at you know physical needs of like the hydrologic cycle the carbon cycle etc you know we're part of a larger cosmos and a spiritual realm so i would say that those four from species needs to ecosystem needs planetary needs and beyond this world those big four that's the oxygen mask that mother earth needs right so of this whole list of nine the first seven are span hum humanity and mother earth and all of her children now that's fine in terms of basically cataloging all these different needs and saying okay you know here's what they are now the next question is how do we go about meeting all of these needs especially in the context of a planet that's in the process of dying if we don't stop the mass death the six mass extinction and exponential planetary overheating which is one of the main drivers of, of our current uh, mass extinction. So to address all these needs successfully, we need clear goals and strategies. That's kind of like at the high level, you start with the goal, what's the goal? Well, you know, save, heal and transform life on earth, for example. Okay, well, you know, what does that mean? Well, we break it down. And we finally get to strategies. How do we go about achieving those goals? And that's at the very high level. The last line of those, uh, oops, the last line that you see there on the list is solutions, planning, and implementation, right? And that's where we go from strategy to, okay, actual solutions, actual concrete plans, for implementing those, developing and implementing those solutions. And then finally the implementation itself. So let me stop screen sharing for a minute and just check in. All righty. Um, so anyway, I'm just mapping out different ways of looking at the whole in terms of all the needs of people and planet and beyond all the way to the cosmos and then how do we achieve it? Well, we start with goals and strategy and then get down to the details of solutions, planning and implementation. So let me screen share and let's look at some examples of that. So the last two slices, goals and strategy and then solutions, planning and implementation, each of those is its own slice. So let me look at solutions, planning and implementation. Um, and I was, 
here I'm just kind of showing that it's the, there's a dialectic between these two of you know figuring out what our goals are and then figuring out how we would meet those but even in but when we come up with specific solutions sometimes those illuminate for us possibilities that we weren't looking at when we first thought about goals and saying hey if we did that we could achieve this goal so let's have a bigger goal for example than what we thought was possible Anyway, let me just give an example of that. So if you look at the level of solutions, planning and implementation, what if we first implemented something like food healers? So we basically said, look, we got to feed everyone first. That's the first stage. And then once we achieve that, that sets us up for the next stage of this slice, which is addressing all of the fundamental needs, not only of people, but of, of entire communities. And then finally, the needs of humanity as a whole which in my mind clearly includes the need for uh, an intentional city in the clouds or perhaps many of them where we can get together and really transform ourselves and transform life on earth so that it can continue rather than just peter out through a, uh, a, a mass extinction event. Anyway, but the second section here is really all about both of these sections, these first two sections, this one that's all about food and the second one that's all about all these other fundamental needs of people and communities and humanity as a whole. It's all about people. The third section here is what I abbreviate EE, -E, everything else, everything else um, pertaining to all other species, Mother Earth, the cosmos, etc. And What's interesting is this portion of everything else called stop animal agriculture is really a huge chunk of everything else, but that comes from the food first solution that says feed everyone plant-based foods. Um, and then the next big thing in my mind beyond ending animal agriculture is solar radiation management. And now here I break out SRM into its own slice of the pie, okay? Um, and so let's address that. And by the way, and as we'll see in a moment, this is kind of fractal-like. So anything, even if it's a component of one of these three stages of a given slice can break out into its own slice with three stages. So solar radiation management, what would be the three stages of implementing this at planetary scale? Well, the first stage I would propose, and this is just me kind of throwing some stuff out there. These are just possible, um, you know, ways of breaking down any of these topics. Right. The first stage would be socialization, would include socialization of the idea, getting people to learn about it and talk about it. Holistic design, because no matter how you slice SRM, there's going to be unintended consequences. How do we make sure that those unintended consequences are far more positive than negative? Uh, modeling is a big important part of that. And, you know, finally, addressing the political, how do we get governments and central banks and political parties, etc, uh, to embrace this. So this first part, this phase one of SRM is really the human side, but it's human side pre-implementation. It's all the stuff we need to do basically in terms of socialization and communication and collaboration and really fundamentally coming to agreement so that in phase two, we can do implementation. We can implement this stuff, finally get it rolled out. And then phase three, is kind of ongoing support, data gathering. You know, let's gather all the data that we possibly can related to SRM and its impacts, et cetera. Use that data to update the modeling, do sophisticated pattern matching, um, and which will then enable us to do optimal modeling and basically use our collective intelligence along with artificial intelligence and modeling intelligence to develop a 
highly developed collective super intelligence or CSI all associated with SRM. And that will enable us to basically, you know, do feedback loops here and here. Right. And you know, al so ultimately it's, it's a cyclical process involving all three of these stages. Um, so anyway, that's one kind of deep dive into how I would go about solutions, planning and implementation in roughly that order. Uh, but here I'm just showing, you know, some of my ideas, your ideas might be totally different. And I'll get to that in a second. But first, let me skim down a ways through a bunch of doodles and get to this image, which is showing here, as you can see, we've got one particular slice, could be SRM, could be human needs, could be whatever. And then out of these, you can have as many of these other slices emanating, just like how SRM emanated from the third phase of solutions planning and implementation. Each of these will have multiple components, multiple different parts, each of which may call for its own slice with three phases. And it's, it's kind of like a fractal. So this one in turn might spawn this one, which then spawns this one, which then spawns this one, et cetera. So um, anyway, that's, that's really kind of the gist of it from the standpoint of these different sections. And so the game of Omnopoly, going back to the very original image here, would be to say, okay, we have all these different slices, they all impact each other. Um, the game might involve, one way to play the game might be to say, okay, let's start with this first section of this first slice, right? This first section, and then to proceed in a spiral, go to the first section of the next slice, and then the first section of the next slice. But what about the following sections? We'll get to that. We first go through all the first sections of all the slices until we get to here. And we say, okay, well, what comes next? Well, if we continue up the spiral, now we're in the second section. You see that of this same first slice that we talked about originally. And then we go and do the second section of each slice, right? Until we get to here and now we do the third section of the first slice and so on all the way till the end until we've done all three sections of all nine slices as the case may be um, that's one way of kind of progressing about it it's sort of the spiraling method as has been used in education uh pioneered by uh, Dr. Baez and then Professor Baez, his nephew, um, John Baez of UC Riverside. Anyway, it's, it's a really great methodology for learning stuff. And if we're going to make this a game, an educational game, this might be, this is one, you know, pathway to pursue. Um, now you'll notice that in the center of this image, there is this circle in the middle, right? And here's how I kind of how I like to think about that. No matter how you go about framing, what are the different slices? What are the different topics? And how do you chunk them out into the different portions, first, second, and third? No matter how you do that and what you focus on and what's first, second, or third, the whole of this, right? The whole of this tells a story, right? And perhaps that story is best encapsulated by the last two portions, goals and strategies and solutions, planning and implementation. Um, and then the details are in all the other slices, human needs and ecosystem needs, et cetera. And you know, the solutions of how we're gonna address all those needs. But so all that is, you know, what I've 
was drawing a moment ago, all the green stuff spanning all these different slices in their different sections. But imagine that this yellow center of the picture is in a sense um, a culmination, a synthesis. All this ultimately points to the center and the center is where we really try to make sense of it all as a whole, right? And um, one way that I think about that in terms of this game, um, Monopoly, I'm going to represent with a different uh, bunch of images, which I will represent here as well, first, let me talk about it. So, you know, let's say that that in this intentional city, there are different groups, different communities working on different sections of different slices, but all the while going back to the center and saying, hey, center, you know, here's what we figured out for this slice. Here's a synthesis of it. Here's a graphical representation of it. Here's a summary of it, okay? and the job of the center of the circular city is to integrate, 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 all that, but at a sufficiently high level, right? And in a way, the ultimate test of a given grand plan encompassing all the different slices, all the different needs and the different goals and strategies and specific solutions and plans and implementations and all that is does it all make sense? And does the whole of it constitute a story that we can really get excited about, which is really kind of the next phase of this new story for humanity, which is both backward looking and forward looking, right? And so there's a visual that I really like for what could be going on at the center. And here's the visual. Uh, see if this is familiar to you. Anyway, this is from Google Images. Have you seen these images before? No, not really. Not that I recall. Okay. A lot of people. Yeah, these are these are images of. Here's one that shows it kind of granular, of these human towers that they build in Barcelona. These are towers of human beings. I really like this image here that you see. Um, on the side, um, because you see that in addition to the tower part of people going up vertical, you've got all this support structure underneath. You can actually see the lines. Isn't that cool? The lines of people's hands. And here they've got them in different, in different colors. Um, I just think these are fascinating. So this is this is like a thing in Barcelona. They they do this and they see how high they can get. Um, but for me, this is a really nice visual of this concept of a bunch of people getting together and forming. I'm having trouble putting it into words, but again, think back to this circular city at the center. It's like a, there's a group of people that are integrating it all together and seeing how high can we go in terms of the overall mega solution or the set of all solutions and goals and strategies and plans and implementation and everything else. But see, it's supported by radially all the far extremes of the circle that are all pushing in and pushing in with their energy and their force to what culminates as this human tower arising in, uh, in the center, right? And reaching up into the heavens or the cosmos, right? So, but it has to, but it has to draw on all 360 degrees of support, human needs, community needs, the needs of humanity as a whole, the needs of all species, the needs of ecosystems, the needs of the planet as a whole. And then beyond this world, right, spirituality and the cosmos. We have to draw on all of it and address all of it. We can't, you know, no child left behind, no koala bear left behind. We have to be complete. Um, 
but it all has to roll up to one human tower, <laughs> right? Of a bunch of different parts. So all of the humans get to play a part, whether it's a supporting role deep in the second or third stage of a particular slice, all the way up to the grand synthesis of the whole of it all, right? The singular story, this next phase of a new story for humanity. Where do we go from here? And we have to do all of this aboard a sinking Titanic where we've only got so much time left to do anything or we all go down together. So I remember one time hearing about, I was reading an interview of the mayor of Mexico City back in the 80s talking about managing Mexico City. And he said, it's like trying to repair a jet airplane in mid-flight. That's like our task right now. We're mid-flight, things are breaking down. We've got to fix it before we crash and burn. So I see, I see, and some kind of circular structure or some structure of I don't know what kind, and it may not be a single circular, maybe multiple circles. Um, I don't know, I'm just, we're just kind of grappling with this and envisioning what kind of structure this might take. But then if you think of it as, as a game, whereas the game of monopoly is what can I accumulate in terms of properties and real estate houses and hotels and more, more, more for me, creating these black holes of you know, hoarding. This new game of omnopoly would be okay. Let's go around to each of these pieces and build it out with people who can then develop each portion of the whole so that we have a well-integrated and well-functioning whole, right? That's the vision of ICIC and the game of ICIC. The game of building out the individual pieces and at the, at the center, being able to say, I see, I see, I see the whole of it. I see the new story for humanity and how we're gonna get through this, how we're gonna save ourselves, not just humanity, but all of life on earth and indeed mother earth herself as a life supporting planet. All right. So as we think about ICIC and this circular structure and all that, I'm kind of thinking of that the whole of this as this sort of optimal workshop for first mastering the pieces, the parts, and then integrating them all together. And, you know, any kind of project like repairing a tractor or something, um, you can imagine it being very difficult. In fact, I know you don't need to imagine that you've lived it where you're working in the mud and the snow and the rain and you're trying to fix this darn tractor. Well, the optimal situation would be to have a super clean workshop, a huge workshop that you've got lots of space, all the right tools and a great team of people, including specialists in different areas. So it's like, if you need to get a, a nut that's really stuck, unstuck, well, you bring in the nut team and they, and they just pop it off and get it all cleaned up and everything. If something needs to be remachined or reground or whatever, you bring in the grinders and they do it. So imagine you just had like, I don't know, hundreds of people. And um, well, actually a better analogy is these teams that like for the uh, NASCAR or Indy 500 or whatever the, you know, the, the car pulls in and it needs some work and <laughs> they're just, they're just on it. And it's like, um, everything is so efficient. So the trick is the key to all this is the context. How do we create this optimal workshop so that we can break it down into its parts, bring in the right teams, work on all the pieces that need to get worked on and poof, pop it out, right? Like think of Detroit decades ago when they cranked out cars and trucks and then World War II, they reconfigured and they were cranking out tanks and Jeeps and whatever else they needed for the war effort. It was not just Detroit, but the whole of Michigan and, and parts of Canada and Indiana and Ohio and other states that were supplying Michigan. So think of the whole of that as not a circular city, but a circular continent in this case, right? 
Um, so how do we create the right framework and the right game, right? The game of omnopoly versus this all day monopoly game that we're trapped in currently that's keeping us from doing this work. So that's partly why I want to, you know, get the tractor out of the mud, get humanity and our problems and opportunities out of the mud of the surface of the earth and up into the clouds where we can create this pristine, clean, well-lit, warm, safe, well-staffed workshop where we can really get to work on the whole of it and then beam the plans down to earth for implementation <laughs> and beam ourselves up when we need to go up into the game of omnopoly and figure all this out versus beaming ourselves back down to roll up our sleeves and do the implementation, right? So anyway, metaphors, et cetera, <laughs> but that's where I'm at with ICIC and the circular city and the game of omnopoly. Let's all get together and do this in an optimal way. Excellent. Awesome. All right, I'm going to pause.